national championship. And Billy Packer, when you think about it, this might well be our championship game. A great matchup. Well, it really could be. Uh, North Carolina came in seeded third, and that's probably due to that four and five at the end of the year. But, Brent, I think we have two of the best five teams in the country playing on the court tonight. And I've got to go back to 1976 when Bobby Knight took his great ball club and played against Leon Douglas in Alabama to think of a better matchup in the opening round of a regional. Billy, the health of these two teams. Purvis Ellis and Louisville's outstanding freshman center. A pull stomach muscle. Questions about whether or not he can extend pulling down a rebound. Denny Crum telling us he thinks he will be healthy for his confrontation against Brad Doherty. I think he'll be healthy, and he's played well against seven-footers. Bedford and, of course, Dryling. He did well in Washburn. But in Brad Doherty, he's going up against a senior with an awful lot of experience. On the Carolina side, late in the season against Maryland, Steve Hale, their great team leader, suffered a collapsed lung following a collision against Lenny Bias. Tonight, he will not wear a flak jacket. He will wear a football body suit without the pads, and he says that he has been feeling fine. Well, he is feeling fine. One of the most underrated players in all of college basketball. He's asked to do an awful lot. Gives a great deal of leadership to this ball club. Billy, let's take a look now at the keys to victory in this game. Well, when you get two teams of this caliber, one of the keys always is offensive rebounding. Will it be North Carolina's bulk against Louisville's quickness? Somebody's got to get the upper hand there early. Defensive matchups. I think Louisville's got the better situation here because Hale's going to have to play Billy Thompson. That's giving away a lot of size. Billy, judging from your first two, I would say that the adjustments being made by coaches Smith and Crum will be critical. Well, it really would. And we're looking at number two and three now, percentage winning coaches in the nation among active coaches. Look for Dean Smith. He used a lot of different defenses early in this ballgame, Brent. So it's coming up. It's a West Regional semifinal. Louisville and North Carolina. And we'll be right back. Tonight's West Regional Semifinal Game is sponsored by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. Hewlett Packard, the people who turn your business computing problem into a business computing solution. And by the people who help you live the good life, the equitable. For your cooperation. The Louisville Cardinals come into this game against North Carolina, the second seed in the West. They are 28 and 7 on the season. They have played one of the toughest schedules in the country. Note, however, that they are only 1 in 4 against the teams that are still left in this NCAA tournament. They've lost twice to Kansas. As for North Carolina, the third seed, because as Billy Packer told you, they struggled at the end of the season, but they are 5 and 2 against final 16 teams, and that, of course, because they played in a very tough ACC. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. Here's the PA announcer Mark Seegers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Senate for this evening's West Regional semifinal game between the University of North Carolina Tar Heels and the University of Louisville Cardinals. Now let's meet the starting lineup for North Carolina at forward, a 6'10 junior from Kohler, Wisconsin, number 24, Joe Wolf. For Louisville, at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, number 41, Herbert Crook. For North Carolina, at forward, a 6'4 senior from Jenks, Oklahoma, number 25, Steve Hale. For Louisville, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Camden, New Jersey, number 55, Billy Thompson. For North Carolina, at center, a 6'11 senior from Black Mountain, North Carolina, number 42, Brad Doherty. For Louisville, at center, a 6'9 freshman from Savannah, Georgia, number 43, Curtis Ellison. For North Carolina, at guard, a 6'3 junior from Queens, New York, number 30, Kenny Smith. For Louisville, at guard, a 6'4 senior from Ashland, Kentucky, number 42, Jeff Hall. For North Carolina, at guard, a 6'2 freshman from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, number 14, Jeff Lebo. A 6'5 senior from Camden, New Jersey, number 20, Milt Wagner. And introducing.
introducing the head coaches for North Carolina in his 25th season, Dean Smith. For Louisville in his 15th season, Denny Crum. North Carolina and Louisville ready to start in the West Regional Semifinal. The winner will take on Auburn for the title. Win two more games and you get to Dallas in the Final Four. Louisville having disposed of Drexel and Bradley already in this NCAA tournament. As for North Carolina, well, they regrouped. A players only meeting prior to that Utah game. The only time in the memory of Carolina basketball fans that they can remember the players shutting out Dean Smith and getting together. They knocked out Utah and UAB. Tonight, Don Rutledge, who was one of the referees in the Villanova Georgetown Championship game, along with Sonny Holmes and Tom Harrington, will work this conference here tonight in Houston ready to start oh, can't catch it you can tap it twice but you can't catch it and Brad Doherty held on to the ball so it will go to the Louisville Cardinals they are the home team wearing their home white because they are higher seated in this region and I should say if it hits the floor you can go get it but obviously that came right back to it Milt Wagner, their fine lead guard, number 20, gives it up. Shuttles through. Ellison hits Thompson high off the glass. Crook with an offensive rebound and a foul. Now there's what Louisville loves to do is post up inside with various people. They can post up with the guards or the forwards. And Billy Thompson right away went at Steve Hale, and they have a big difference in size there. Thompson has them by about three inches. And the first foul assessed to Joe Wolf, And Herbert Crook will step up to the free throw line. One of those unheralded players, only a sophomore. Crook is 6'7". He attended high school in Louisville Eastern. Last time he played with us at CBS, he was the player of the game. Really surprised everybody at Louisville to move into that starting lineup. And he puts the Cardinals ahead. Full court press expected by uh, everyone. They go to the 2-2-1 and then drop back the man-to-man. -man. Kenny Smith beats it kind of easily. Hale gets it inside to Lebo, rejected by Thompson. Hale in a foot race has it for Carolina. They move it to Smith, who's open on the right side. Wolf off his hands, out of bounds, Louisville's ball. Carolina will pick up, at least with Smith. Now he drops back on Widener. They change up defenses on you so frequently, but it's always a pressure man-to-man -man after a missed basket for Carolina. Billy Thompson inside, and there's Hall with a great outside shooting touch of his, but Billy Thompson is going right down inside with Steve Hale. Full court pressure with a small lineup. Jeff Lebo will bring it up this time. Smith, Lebo, and Hale out there. So good ball handlers in Carolina should not have trouble against the pressure. However, a lot of teams have been affected by it. Now Louisville switches a lot. That's why you see Billy Thompson get stuck on Doherty. Ellison has Wolf fronted underneath. Hall is now with Hale. They hit Smith, the cutter. Swings the ball to Wolf with the left hand as he rose in the air, and he drew the foul. It's going to be Crook pushing off on Wolf inside. Now, very few teams. Here we can see Auburn, a winner early uh, tonight. UNLV had a great first half. Brent couldn't keep it going. How did Chuck Person look to you, Billy? Well, he is one of the best players in the United States. A great outside shooter for his size. He plays well under control. Doesn't take bad shots. Can rebound. Plays nice defense. He's just an outstanding player. Wolf out of Kohler, Wisconsin, hitting the free throw. So, of course, Auburn and the winner of this game will play Saturday for the West Regional title and a spot in the Final Four a week from Saturday in Dallas. That out, Doherty races it down in the corner for Carolina. Seen an awful lot of offensive rebounds on missed foul shots so far in this uh, tournament. Kind of surprising because most teams block out on that play. Hale off the fake. Short and goes back after it and they're tied up. The possession arrow goes to Carolina. Brent, one of the things that Denny Crum is able to do because of his recruiting process, he always recruits big guards and therefore they can switch on defense and man-to-man. -man. They don't care who's guarding who. Live. Cannot stop Doherty from that spot. There's the place where he has the edge tonight against Purvis and the entire Louisville defense. There's 
the jump trap jump right now trapping in the corners Wagner's first shot not there and Purvis Ellison was coming up on the back of Hale and the foul will be on the freshman center one of the things to watch for tonight is whether or not Ellison or Doherty for Dean Smith gets into foul trouble. Well, I think both coaches agree that, that either one of those get into foul trouble early, and it gives a big, big advantage. I think that foul that, that last time is going to be on Billy Thompson. 2-2-1, two, two, pressures the zone. Kenny Smith handling it with a dribble. In the middle was Wolf, gives it back to Doherty, who's out way high, and of course now he'll rotate down off of that pass. One of the reasons it's tough to press at Carolina is because their big guys catch the ball so well. Doherty hits Hale, a great cut from the other side. Tar Heels lead by a point, 7.31 to go here in the first half. Ellison off the dribble, and a rebound by Lebo. So that quick rebounding skill of the Cardinals has not been demonstrated here so far. Smith penetrates, rejected by Ellison, taps it back now to Thompson. Lebo back defensively. Beautiful play by Billy Thompson. Doesn't quite get it to roll. Tried the finger roll. I think he was surprised that Lebo didn't try to get the charge. Hale penetrating, collides with Crook, and that's going to be another personal on Crook, and that is number two. Very good move by Steve Hale taking that ball all the way. He saw the opening. Good crossover dribble right here. Crook reaches for him instead of beating him to the spot. Excellent call by the official. Now watch that lob again. North Carolina likes to go ahead and push you right down in under the basket. Get that lob to Doherty or Wolf. Doherty and Smith was open. Great head to too far on the basket. And Wolf trying to keep it alive. And he draws the personal foul. Ellison. Now we have checked with the table, and you are absolutely right, Billy. That one down at the other end was Thompson, and so this on Ellison is number one. Picking up some fouls in a hurry. That's the fourth team foul on Louisville. North Carolina, an excellent free throw shooting team. Doherty on the wing. Ellison leaning on Wolf. And again, that pass into the middle off the cut, off Smith's hands, out of bounds, Louisville's ball. North Carolina getting a lot of cuts on the back side, getting men open underneath the basket rather, rather easily. And now North Carolina goes to the zone. Yesterday at practice, Coach Smith stressed over and over rebounding, and so far it is paying a dividend. 6-2, Tar Heels lead in that department as Ellison hits the little jump shot. North Carolina showed the zone, and they tried to trap out of that, and Louisville picked it up well. Wolf comes back, and the lead changes hands again. Ellison, a very active center. They get it to Crook. Elijah's up on Wolf and got the roll. Tough shot. Coast North Carolina has changed about three different defenses so far early in the ball game. They've only gone about four and a half minutes. This is Lebo off a of fake, gets inside of Milt White. Oh, nice man. play by Jeff Lebo. He drew the Some foul, touch. too. Some touch. That's the fifth team foul. Let's see if North Carolina tries to press after a made free throw. So Jeff Lebo, the freshman out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and the son of a high school coach. Makes it a three-point play and a 10-8 Tar Heel lead. North Carolina just shows a little fake press here. Let's see if they're going to try to trap when it gets over half court. Here they go with their trap. Hall. Another rebound by North Carolina. They are not giving Louisville second shots at the offensive end. Hale is alone. Missed, and now Thompson is off quickly to Wagner. Smith awaits him. Milt gets in deep and hits the shot. He has a little bit of a height advantage if he can take Smith down inside. Of course, Milt out last year with that broken foot. Came back a little slow at the start of the year. It was one of the problems for Louisville early in December. Turnover on Hale's pass. He and Wolf miscommunicated on that. Now, I want to warn everybody that we are going to show the Kentucky score. If you want to watch the tape delay, just look the other way. I will not say anything about the score. 
It's hard to believe. It's <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> All right, it's off the screen. You can come back now if you want to stay up late and watch that. I know we do not want to spoil anybody's late night game. We've got a timeout. Dean Smith and the Tar Heels will huddle. They're tied with Louisville at 10. tied at 10 here with 14.55 to go. Now, earlier, Auburn came back in the second half to eliminate UNLV, 70-63, to 63, and their fine coach, Sonny Smith, has now joined us at courtside. Coach, congratulations. What turned it around for you? I, th I think the coach took a sabbatical in the first half and showed up for the second half. <laughs> I think adjusting to their zone. I, it's the best zone that we've faced since I've been coaching at Auburn, and we adjusted. Sonny, why don't you sit right there? We'll watch a couple of plays. I know you've got the winner here on Saturday. North Carolina and Louisville all tied at 10. Joe Wolf gets it to Steve Hale. Kirk picks him up now. So North Carolina trying to get a lot of screens. Good play by Billy Thompson defensively. And Hall Blakes, the pass takes him over to the corner, comes up with a jump shot, and Louisville takes the lead for Denny Crone. And Hall and Wagner, Sonny, they've got two great career shooters in that back row, don't they? Oh, they have great shooters, and so does Carolina. Smith penetrates, gets inside quickly, and it's an offensive foul called against the Queens guard. That could have been a big call that Crook would have had his third right there. Good defensive job by Crook. Just gives you so many solid performances without having to be spectacular. Sonny, are your players staying to watch this game? How do you view that? Or do you give them permission to go ahead and leave as Warren Martin checks in for North Carolina? We never let them stay except in this situation. Last year, we felt like we overprepared for Carolina. We want them to look and see that they're human so that we can play them one time. <laughs> it looks like you want a piece of Carolina. You know, <laughs> no. Louisville can still be in this thing, Sonny. Well, I, I, we have never played Louisville, but we have Carolina. We, we look at Louisville as a team we haven't seen. Now, Bellison's hands on the turnover. Hale brings it back. Quick pass to Wolf. Comes up with a jump shot, and the underrated Tar Heel hits the field goal. It's his second jumper from beyond 15 feet. Good hands by Martin, but he's over the back. So the senior Warren Martin, who was off of Dean Smith's bench, picks up his first personal foul. Again, Brent, there's Crook doing so many of the good fundamental things. He had a good position established inside, and he wouldn't allow Martin to come around him. We're tied at 12, 13-48, first half. And Jeff Hall got it to Wagner, took it back, and they get it inside to Crook, and the open man was Wagner. Rattled out, and Wolf rebounding. Louisville retreats now. Now a little matchup problem for Louisville with the two big guys in the ball game. That somebody's got to take Martin. And Doherty is fouled by Thompson. Foul is really piling up in a hurry. Next time around, Louisville's going to have themselves in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Billy Thompson picks up his second, and that's one player Denny Crum doesn't want to have on that bench. Sonny, going back to the Auburn team, a lot of folks say they're playing much better now than they did earlier in the year. Would you agree with that? Physically, we played as hard and was playing as good early in the season, but mentally, we're playing better now. Early in the season, we were not a good mental ball club. Sonny, on Saturday, people around the country are going to get a chance to see Chuck Person play. Certainly one of the best in the country. I don't think there's any doubt because he can do it inside and he can do it outside. And that's the thing that some of the great players cannot do. And here we saw a great one, Doherty. With oh, big break. Throws. Great break right into Ellison's hands. Hit the jump shot. Easily could have gone out of bounds on the turnover. Assist backboard. <laughs> Tie score at 14. Doherty to Martin, and he ships it back. Oh, no call on the foul on Ellison. He thought for sure there was going to be a foul, and he followed up with a shot, and now it is Wolf, but no. Three seconds. Three seconds. One pass too many, and many times when you get three big guys in a game like that, and they get in the lane, if they overpass, you've got a foul. Now, here's that play. Hits off Crook's hands, hits the backboard, right back to Ellison. He has a nice jumper off the board. Sonny, you teach that play down at Auburn? Or... We work on it three times a week. <laughs> Wagner brings it to the attack for Louisville. Hall is on his left. 
North Carolina in the zone now with Warren Martin right in the middle. That ever-changing defensive pattern of Dean Smith. Widener up over Hale on the zone. Great leads it. Rebound by McSwain, who checked into the game. And as he came up, he was fouled. And that now is the second foul on Warren Martin. Mark McSwain had a great game against Drexel. Comes right in. That's a super rebound when you go up against Doherty coming from the weak side and still pick it off. And there's Martin hammering him on the arm. So McSwain steps up to the free throw line. He is 6'7". You will note how heavily taped his left knee is. McSwain was injured against Memphis State earlier this season and sat out quite a time. And now he has come back and he has given Denny Crum a good big man to bring off the bench. He's a junior and he's out of Atlanta, Georgia. And there's a good view of the injured knee. Well, Denny's been getting great play off the bench, but he didn't have a lot of experience there. Most of the play was coming from freshmen. In the NCAA tournament, you'd rather have somebody that has that experience. And McSwain started nine games last year. Doherty. That's how it is. And there's that matchup problem again. McSwain really too small to play Doherty inside. So Smith goes to the big lineup, and then he will switch back with Curtis Hunter and Jeff Lebo due to check in here shortly. Ellison really tough at the top of that post. He's a great passer. Has excellent court presence for a real young player. Deflected and on the turnover in the middle, it's Kenny Smith. Hale is on his left. Rises up with the shot. Taken back down by Ellison. And the freshman sends it to Hall. When Wagner slipped and fell down, that might have thrown Hale off stride. And Warren Martin with his third personal foul. And that hurts Dean Smith to have three fouls on Martin in a hurry because I think he found that matchup something that he could really use offensively. Now Martin's going to have to sit. And Dave Popson, the 6'9 junior from Ashley, Pennsylvania, checks into the game along with Jeff Lebo who returns and Curtis Hunter, number 43. Martin is the leading shot blocker. And we see LSU, that SEC, Sonny, playing well. Very well. We're playing better now, I think, later in the season than we did early, all clubs. That would be quite a win for Dale Brown. He got all that uh, abuse for having to play at home down in Baton Rouge. Now he goes on Georgia Tech's court and it's doing pretty well. Dale's probably playing a pox and one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pox and one worked pretty good a couple times. He stung you with it. He stung us big, big time. <laughs> Wagner with the free throw. 11.59 here in the first half. There's a good trap in place right in the corner, but you can see the big players for Carolina handle the ball fairly well. It's Popson, Doherty, Wolf with the ball in the front line. Doherty with a little turnaround jump. Hook gets an offensive rebound and drew the foul, too, and that is Kimbrough, who has checked in the freshman foul. Lead. Kimbrough going to be a great player. He can play the guard spot or the forward spot. But of course, it's only a freshman. That makes it tough. Oh, that's extremely tough. Sonny, do you have videotapes on both these teams? And depending we, on who wins, will you then go back and break down some tape? We'll break down both teams. We tried to bring both, but we're, we're short on Louisville. We need something on Louisville. So you got somebody back in the hotel taping this that's group. That's exactly right. right. I got a feeling, Billy, that Auburn really wants North Carolina. No, not really. We just know more about Carolina than we do Louisville, and that's uh, we felt like that they they took us out of the game because we knew them too well. Tied again here with 11:36 to go in the first half. Wagner, Hall, McSwain, Ellison, and Kimbrough on the floor for Denny Crum right now. McSwain with the jump shot. Good block out by Curtis Hunter. Zone was really active that time down the floor. Doherty's open for the lob. Ellison was caught. Carolina couldn't get in the ball. Great pass to Lee Hall. North Carolina probably works the backdoor cut, Sonny, as well as anybody in the country. Been doing it for years. Billy, they beat us with a backdoor cut on the last play of the game, if you remember in Birmingham a year ago by Kenny Smith. And here's that zone. 1-3-1, one, one, Dave Popson running the baseline, and North Carolina's throwing a lot of different defenses at Louisville. You really have to recognize in the backcourt what's going on before you set up. Wagner moves it to Hall. Wolf better be ready for Wagner's jump shot. Still 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Wagner off the dribble, stepped inside and traveled. Throwing the turnover. 
It'll go to Carolina with Hale and Smith both returning to the floor. Wolf and Hunter leave. So for Carolina now, they will have Popson, Smith, Doherty, Lebo, and Hale. Something is interesting yesterday, Dean Smith said, although he's got a very deep bench, he'd like to be in the NCAA tournament playing with just seven or eight fellas. Do you feel the same way, that that's about what you can use? I think your chemistry is always a lot better if you play seven or eight, and everybody knows what's expected of him, how much time he's going to play. Doherty turns around and right in Ellis's face. Purvis, a very good shot blocker. And North Carolina back to man to man. And Louisville has not had a field goal since the 13-20 mark, and we're now down inside of 10 minutes. They've scored only at that free throw line, and Wagner ends that dry spell. There was a case where Wagner was posting up downside. He had Kenny Smith off balance. He's able to shake three. Lebo bangs in his third field goal in four attempts from the field. Brent, we said they're two of the best five teams in the country in their improvement so far. Excellent first half. Hobson running around. Should be somebody open. Ellison pushed it a little hard. And underneath, Kimbrough rising up for a rebound has assessed his second personal foul. When a man traps, as Popson did that last time, and gets lost out there in the court, if Louisville had just been patient, somebody had to have an easy shot. I think I think the uh, the traps that Carolina puts on comes at such infrequent times that you're confused. You set your offense, and then they hit you with it, and you, you have a real problem. We had a problem of recognizing the traps a year ago and because you never know when they're coming. And there's your team, Tony, watching the game. Well, that, he's a team by himself right there. That's Chuck Person. Well, I tell Relaxing. you what, he's put a lot of bread on my table, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him watch as long as he wants to. Well, you better take him back to the hotel, but make sure he doesn't get hit by a car or something, Sonny. He's valuable property. He really is. Tell me, can Bo Jackson also play basketball, Sonny? Do you want to take a shot at he that? He wants to shoot too much. I, 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 <laughs> I was going to let him play until he brought up shooting. <laughs> He's a bricklayer. <laughs> but a wealthy one. A very wealthy one. <laughs> Kenny Smith hits the free throws. So we've got a timeout. Sonny, I want to thank you very much for dropping by. Good luck on Saturday. My pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. From the summit in Houston, Texas, I'm Brent Musburger, along with Billy Backer. What we are viewing live is a West Regional semifinal between the Tar Heels of North Carolina and the Cardinals of Louisville. Nine minutes and 25 seconds to go here in the first half. North Carolina leading Louisville 25 to 19. And Billy Thompson has not gotten into the game offensively. Well, he hadn't been able to get a field goal. Hadn't touched the ball much offensively. Now he's matched up. Right going in that trap defense of theirs. And they came right at Hall. They get it to McSwain. And Billy Thompson with an offensive rebound falling backwards. Now he comes up between defenders and misses. He is 0 for 3 from the field. And reached on Kenny Smith. Almost picked up his third foul. Good pump fake into Doherty, who got in behind Ellison, who made a quick move back at him. Hall finally comes up with the loose now ball. Now, there was that quick jumping. Billy Thompson got off the ground faster than Wolf. Steve Hale matched up with Thompson down low. Hale gambling, and Thompson finally gets on the scorebook. Quickly, Carolina comes back to the attack. Jump hook, Joe Wolf. Boy, how many kids are developing that half hook? A little jump hook, impossible to block. Wolf has got it down with both the right and the left hand. And he's perfect on all three of his field goal attempts. Total of seven points here tonight. And he and Doherty are the scoring leaders for Carolina. Allison travelers and went to the ground. He'll go over to Carolina. How about that court presence by Allison? Even though he fell down, he thought he kept his pivot foot solid. And as a freshman, he was showing the referee the pivot foot. He plays uh, much older than his years. Each team has turned the ball over five times here so far in the first half. There's a wet spot on the floor, and that's why we've got a little stoppage in play here before Carolina brings the ball down. I would say, you know, Dean Smith doesn't seem to have a, a set rotation with his bench. Is that unusual for him? Well, I think he's keeping everybody fresh, but what he was not able to do this year is to get somebody that he could count on in that small forward position, so he's rotating a lot of guys. Good catch. 
but Doherty traveled after he caught the ball as he made his move back toward the end line. What I like that North Carolina is doing so far, they're really varying their offense and their defense. You know, they go inside with the game, and they go outside. It's tough to go ahead and, and get consistent on Louisville's part. Dean Smith concerned about rebounds, but he need not be at least so far. He's getting the job done off the glass. Wagner gets inside with the penetration. And that's where it's nice to have a 6'5 guard. He can take it right down the hole and put it up in front of a 6'10 forward. It's a four-point Carolina lead. Time remaining first half. Now you see Louisville switching on the inside an awful lot. That's why that backdoor cut's going to be available. Deflected by Hall, but Doherty gets it back. Wanted Hale, Thompson knocked it out of bounds. And you have so many switches on the inside, somebody changes direction, Brent, and then they're wide open underneath the basket. But that's the way Denny Crum teaches his defense, and he's been so effective with it over the years. Smith on the bounce pass to Doherty. Again, he got in behind Ellison and slammed in the basket. But he also committed the personal foul. Good job. Score the field goal, but also credit Doherty with his first foul of the game. That is a good job by Billy Thompson coming over and helping on the weak side. You can see Ellison tries to beat Doherty to the spot. When he's playing over the front, somebody's got to help from the weak side, and that was Billy Thompson who got over there just in time. Very tough job for a freshman center. Ellison with his hands full against... A player who has led the nation this season in field goal percentage. Brad Doherty has improved his game for Carolina. Thompson on the penetration. He has his second field goal now, and he's starting to warm to the task. Billy Thompson averaging right at 20 points a game now in the NCAA tournament, and he looks like, as a senior, he's really being aggressive. Wolf rattles in a miss, and there was Steve Hale. The reason that Hale was open there, Billy Thompson, after he made that move, went long to try to get an easy fast break. Nobody blocking Steve Hale out. Lob. They wanted Thompson and Hale fouled him. That's Hale's first foul. They'll be shooting one and one now. I'm sure Dean Smith sitting on the other side realizing that anytime he's in a straight man-to-man, -man, Steve Hale's really got a problem with Billy Thompson because Thompson's taking him down low. Both teams in the bonus now. And Kevin Walls, number 15, replaces Milt Wagner. The Camden connection replaces the Camden connection. Billy Thompson out there, all three players, and it's been widely reported. All three from Camden High School. Billy has not missed a free throw in the NCAA tournament. It was 10 for 10. The foul line out in the early games. Considered the outstanding high school player in America in his senior year in high school. A lot of people disappointed about his play, but I think they misunderstood what type of player he is. He's fundamentally sound in all phases of the game. Not a big score or a huge score. LSU still ahead of Georgia Tech. We'll have, of course, more on that at halftime from Jim Nance of New York. Lebo. And here comes Thompson of the Cardinals. They can pull to within two points. Good fake by Crook. Crook. Comes around Wolf. Ellison now down the baseline. And off the foul. It's going to go back. And did they call walking on the play? They sure did. A travel as he came down. It goes down, of course, as a turnover. Surprised that Doherty let Ellison to go baseline that time. Even though it was a turnover, Ellison would have had it if he hadn't walked. They wanted Lebo back door, and he was cut off, so he pops back out for the jump shot. Now there's where the case where Lebo set the screen, and then Louisville switched, leaving Lebo wide open. And Lebo would not let Howe have the baseline at the other end. Look for Billy Thompson again, trying to get low with Hale. He's posted up down inside. Hale using his body, bumping, coming up with him. Oh, Billy Thompson is so tough. That's a matchup that we said at the top of the game is going to be tough for North Carolina. It's proven to be that way. And Billy Thompson really hustling out there, Brent. Doing a good job defensively, too. Quick pass by Lebo, and it hit Ellison. Out of bounds, Carolina's ball. 
Good recovery by Allison because Wolf was wide open for an easy layup. And here again, you see everybody packed down inside looking for that lob. Rebo off the miss. Doherty couldn't get good body position on it. And as Wolf went down to the floor trying to rush it away, he committed a personal foul. Doherty and Wolf both inside on an out of bounds situation. And it looked like they had the lob opportunity, which they scored on earlier in the ball game available there. Jeff Hall going to that line. Is it going to be Billy Thompson going to the line? Looks like Billy. I thought it was Jeff moving up to the line. Of course, a great shooter. But you couldn't ask for more of a guy that's never missed one all in the entire tournament. Eight points, three rebounds so far. He's shooting a lot of arch on the ball and he's still going in. Looks like a lot more arch than he ever shot before. The fouls for Carolina are equally distributed except for sub Warren Martin. He picked up a quick three. But Wolf, Hale, Doherty, and Kenny Smith with only one apiece. For Louisville, Cook and Thompson both have two, along with Pony Kimbrough, who was off the bench for Denny Crum briefly. One of the real things that I think is interesting so far is Ellison so far has been able to do a good job with Doherty. They haven't Hall on the side. gamble almost had it, but Lebo got it back for Carolina. Hale into Wolf, gets it back. There's Doherty. Doherty with that position, missed it, tapped up by Wolf, couldn't score, and Louisville gets a break, and they come down with an opportunity now to tie the game inside of the five-minute mark here in the first half. You don't see Doherty miss many at that range. Man-to-man -man by North Carolina. Louisville on its best run of the game so far, having hit four in a row. Kevin Walls, the left-hander. Great scorer in high school. Of course, bothered by that knee since he's been in Louisville, but he's playing a lot of quality minutes here of late. Louisville's defense really picking up, giving North Carolina trouble. Lebo cut off by Crook. Picked up his dribble. He's in some trouble. Here's Hale who comes over to help out. Now Lebo circles underneath on the move. They find Smith, the open man, and Carolina leads. Well, you couldn't fault Louisville on that one, Brent. They all tried to drop inside because they thought the ball would be punched into Doherty. Gave up something, which was the jumper, and Kenny Smith can hit it from that range. And North Carolina goes back to the zone. Both teams look a little tired right now. Smith Gamble. Thompson's got it, and bounce pass inside, and rising up is Crook. He has the field goal, and he also drew the personal foul. And on Hale, and that will be his second. Beautiful pass on the inside. Billy Thompson, a great bounce pass. Crook goes up. There's Hale with size differential, about four inches. Crook gets the shot off by reaching back. Good play. And returning is Curtis Hunter. And along with Dave Thompson, Hale and Wolf leave at the 334 mark here in the first half. Opportunity to take that lead. And Louisville leads it. 36-35. Carolina trailing as Herbert Cook comes up with a three-point play. We've got a timeout in Houston. Back in Houston, I'm Brett Musburger along with Billy Packer. And Billy, there are some very disappointed athletes from UNLV. Yeah, Banks and Gillum. Banks had the great first half tonight for his outside shooting. When he had that injury, he had a problem. Now, here's that mismatch that we talked about size-wise. Hale's doing a good job fundamentally on defense. He stays right with Billy Thompson. But the difference of four inches in the height allows Thompson to just shoot right over Steve Hale. That'll be a problem all night long, particularly the way Billy Thompson's going after it offensively. Carolina down by a point at the 330 mark here in the first half. Smith brings it up on walls. Real key for Carolina. They haven't been able to get Doherty the ball. Ellison doing a good positioning job. In Inside the is Smith. But Denny Crump comes off the bench. He said, Kevin Walls, welcome to play in North Carolina. You've got to be ready for backdoor cuts. Back to the zone goes North Carolina. It's been a 9-4 run by the Cardinals, and that has put them back in contention of this game. You know, Brent, they did it without Milt Wagner in the court, too. Now all three Canadian players are in the, in the game at the same time, and Milt welcomes them back. He is four of seven from the field. Great pure shooter. Well, 
Glenn Shoes still ahead of the Ramblin' Wreck. They have been all the way here in the first half, and they're inside of a minute and a half in their first half. Off Popston's hands. Great state by Curtis Hunter. However, there was a traveling violation. It'll go to the Cardinals. North Carolina continuously looking to go inside, but those quick leapers of Louisville giving them problems once they get the ball. The Hall back on the floor for Coach Crum, bringing the ball up now along with Thompson, Crook, Ellison, and Wyking. Thompson. Boy, he is hot. He is four of seven, and remember he missed his first two shots, and he did not get going until we were about halfway through the first half. That's right, Brent. It was about eight minutes, and he hadn't scored at all. Bad pass. Doherty was off balance going the other way and couldn't get back in time and a lot of the fans have traveled here from louisville to cheer for the cardinals and certainly there are also an equal number from the state of north carolina well i think the key right now is the fact that louisville's been able to match up north carolina north carolina having a pro problem with billy thompson who's out of the game for a little rest right now tony kimbrough has returned they hit Hall, fine, here shooter, rolled out this time, and Kimbrough, the freshman, with a rebound. Can't get it to fall, and Lebo coming back, Crook avoiding the foul. Lebo up with the show, and Wagner got it to fall. He is 5 of 7 and 11 points for the freshman. Lebo's had some really hot ball games. With 0 for 8 this year, he in the loss at Virginia, which was kind of surprising. Ellison bangs it in at the other end. How about these two freshmen? I guess, Billy, your point, though, is so well taken. At this point, they are no longer freshmen. They have been through grueling seasons for Louisville and North Carolina. They are wise way beyond that first year. And those two probably among the best five freshmen in the country. Kenny Smith is short on the shot, and Ellison yanks down a rebound. Notice neither team's been able to get the fast break going because they both get back so well. Into Kimbrough now, who comes up and misses the shot, and there was a pushing foul called against Curtis Hunter. His first. And, of course, again, I want to remind everybody that at the conclusion of every CBS NCAA tournament game, we will select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both North Carolina and Louisville. Tony Kimbrough broke to the basket so well that time, he just beat Hunter to the spot. Said they hadn't been able to get the fast break going, although that wasn't a traditional fast break. Kind of delayed fast break and a good move by Kimbrough. They are now 11 of 12 from the free throw line here in the first half. And when they were cold from the field for a time, they were 0 of 5. It was free throws that kept them in the game. And the freshman from Louisville, Seneca High School, Kimbrough. Misses that time. Doherty with the rebound. And the Tar Heels come down inside of a minute. Almost a steal by Wagner. You know North Carolina is looking to try to get Brad Doherty the ball here early in the half. Early Hunter half. on the cut. Super move. A two-point Louisville lead. Last shot time if they want to take the air out here with the time coming down in the first half. Hunter is the player that Dean Smith trying to set on in that small forward position. Dean Smith wants his team to push out the defense. Take a chance that Louisville is trying to hold it for the last shot. Ellison, and he shot with quite a bit of time left on the clock. North Carolina can take advantage of that and tie the game here at the half. Dean Smith wanting one. He's going into his four corners. Lebo, and we're tied at one, and it's over for the half. Some half by these two clubs. It's as good as we said it'd be. The end of the first half, and they're all even at 43. Jim Nance and Bill Raftery will talk about the action around the. Have to make the moves in the case of Dean Smith. He's going to have to decide what he's going to do to slow Billy Thompson down. Maybe show some more zones. And in the case of uh, Denny Crum, if Brad Doherty starts getting that ball on the inside, and here we see North Carolina coming out in a trap, wide open is Thompson. Great fake. Super pump fake on the inside. It's tough to trap Louisville because they can throw right over the top. Our heels come back down, trailing by that field goal right now. Hale, five seconds, close. Yes, With sir. It, and it is a violation. Now, even if you throw that ball, the five-second count is still on. So Hale got trapped. He made a critical mistake in picking up his dribble down on that sideline. Now 
Ellison out high, puts it on the floor, drives on Doherty, misses, Wolf rebounds, and here comes Kenny Smith. As Ellison gets a little stronger, he's going to be able to make that move and score with it. And Thompson came back down and gave the Tar Heels only one shot. And Ellison goes right back and posts up again. North Carolina straight man to man now. Watch that Thompson Hale matchup. Herbert Cook off the dribble. It's a four point Louisville lead, and they have come on with confidence here in the early moments of the second half. Brent, how often do we see in a key ball game like this that first two minutes of the second half always breaks things out? And there's Georgia Tech catching back up. They were down six and a half. Get it inside the door, and he has the field goal, the first of the second half for the Tar Heels. So just as LSU and Georgia Tech are deadlocked, we have a two-point difference here. The Cardinals ahead of the Tar Heels. Georgia Tech drew even with LSU with a 6-0 spurt at the start of the second half. Jeff Hall missing. And it goes over to the Tar Heels. And that last play down court is one of the few times tonight where, where Louisville got in a position where they're switching put a Milt Wagner on Doherty, and it was just no chance whatsoever for Milt Wagner. Louisville closed out the first half, hitting 8 of 12. Now it is the Tar Heels who can draw back into a tie on the turnover. Good idea, but Ellison was there to meet the challenge. Lebo can't get it back from Hall. Hall penetrates, passes, and Thompson with the field goal underneath. And Billy Thompson now has risen to this occasion. Six field goals and nine tries. He has 16 points for the Cardinals. Fred, that's why I think in the NCAA tournament, the senior leadership seems to be so critical each and every year. The guy and Ellison, there's the freshman coming out on the senior, and he jams it home. Good quickness by Purvis Ellison. Chance to blow open a pretty good lead here in a game that's been extremely tight. The Cardinals have outplayed the Tar Heels. Doherty with his second field goal. He is keeping North Carolina in it here in the second half, 51-47. Of course, with a 45-second shot clock in college basketball, we'll see no four corners. Good pass. It went to Cook from Thompson, and Cook got it back. Can't get it to fall. Doherty rebounds. Off to Smith. It's a three-on-two advantage. Lebo glides inside, and he is fouled by Milt Wagner. And on uh, Wagner, that's his second personal foul. North Carolina using that three-guard situation here to make up a good fast break. Everybody fill in the lanes. Let me warn everybody again, if you want to watch the tape delay, look away. We're going to show the Kentucky score in an earlier game tonight over in Atlanta. Off the screen now, and Jeff Lebo will shoot the free throw. You know, Lebo this year, Brent, is, is the kind of guy I look to be in his career somewhere in the neighborhood of an 85 to 90 percent free throw shooter. He has not been that good a free throw shooter, only at 75 on the year. Wolf runs down the mist, couldn't get it to fall. Tar Heels battle for the loose ball. Lebo trying to come up out of there, and there is a foul out of frustration jeff lebo committed that personal foul he was alone amidst the tall trees underneath and could not get a handle and could not rise above the difficulty and he lashed out and fouled there was a case where experience would tell on lebo he had an opportunity underneath to bring the ball back out and set up in the offense and actually the backboard blocked his shot north carolina goes back and sets up in the zone paul and Hall knows right where to go in that zone. Go down the corner and hit that jumper. The zone buster hits the field goal. It's 53-47 Cardinals. Looks like Louisville picking up a little bit of spirit right now, getting some confidence. In the early moments of the second half, they have taken command here on North Carolina. Ellison jumping out in front of Doherty. Stolen by Wagner in a foot race. Hale will cut him behind the back to Hall from Wagner. And now the Cardinals are coming alive. Dean Smith thinking timeout right here. He's up off the bench. He didn't call it. He likes to save him in these ball games. They want to get that ball inside to Doherty. Deflected on another turnover. Lead now to Crook. Smith can't cut him off. Great play. Now he's got to go timeout. But he lets them play. I can't believe he's down 10, Brent. Louisville really picking up an awful lot of momentum here.
Anderson jumped in on Doherty, and Doherty reached back across him and committed his second personal foul. Pass goes inside. We find Ellison doing a super job inside, beating Doherty to the spot. Doherty touched it last. Ellison, uh, as a freshman, as I said, he plays way beyond his years. Any questions about Curtis Ellison being able to handle perhaps first-year jitters in a big-time tournament game are being put to rest here tonight. He's the young man playing a great game. Hall is open on the right side. Hit the little jump shot. And Carolina's got to go timeout, Brent. This game is getting... They, now they go timeout. I think they waited two possessions too long. A 16-4 spurt by the Cardinals to start the second half, and they are in command. Watch Milt Wagner on the steal. Well, Steve Hale telegraphed that pass. Milt Wagner goes behind the back, and when you get a nice run going on a team, you see how loose they play. Hall with a good left-handed shot. North Carolina with a critical possession here. Now, Doherty is the only Tar Heel to have scored in the second half. He has all four of their points. Four Cardinals are on the scoreboard here. Wolf with a left-handed shot and misses. And Louisville comes back down again. Hall with six, Cook with four, Thompson with four, Ellison with two during this run. And Hall will come up in the right corner. Cook runs it down. Lebo tries to draw the foul, and it is called against Cook. So Jeff Lebo makes a sensational play over here. Not much Cook could do. He didn't quite have his balance. That is his third. He picked up two quick ones. But Louisville's done a good job staying out of foul trouble. For North Carolina now, they've got to figure out a way to score. Denny Crum showed him a little zone the last time down the floor just for once. Turnovers here in the second half. Six by the Tar Heels and one by Louisville. You notice when Doherty steps out, Ellison's quite a bit quicker. He's able to handle him outside. Smith. And now the Heels are three of seven here in the second half. Louisville, eight of 13. Curtis Ellison wanted the ball to swing around. He had Doherty on his hip. North Carolina has not been able to trap. Normally they score a lot of points off their trap by stealing the ball. But tonight every time they trap, Louisville throws right over them. Ball sends it back to Ellison who steps out. Off the fake, drew the foul on Doherty, got him in the air. And that's the third personal foul on Brad Doherty. Well, Brent, as I said, on the defensive end, Ellison is quite a bit quicker than Doherty when he steps outside in the defensive end. And there you can see Ellison really can play the forward spot. He's 6'9 or 6'10. He's extremely quick. He's got a lot of good moves and, uh, without question, is destined to be one of the top players in collegiate basketball by next season. Savannah, Georgia prospect. I've kidded him in practice. Where in the world did he ever have such court presence coming from Savannah? Warren Martin checks in for Dean Smith. And Jeff Lebo is out, so they'll go back to a bigger lineup. But remember that Morton, well, Martin picked up three personal fouls early in the first half. I think the move here by Dean Smith is to try to create some mismatches on his end of the floor. The three big men worked well in the first half, but as you said, Martin picking up the three fouls, he didn't get a chance to use them much. 14-06. Denny Crum counters right away by going zone. He doesn't want to get in the mismatch. Wolf puts the shot from the right corner. And the Tar Heels are back to within nine. Well, these two great coaches, uh, as we said, number two and three in winning percentage in all the land. They trap in the corner, but Ellison reaches up over the top and gets the ball outside to Hall, who slows things down. And there's the 1-3-1 one, one zone by North Carolina trying to trap in the corners, but you can see Louisville really ready for it. Wagner missing. Hale runs it down, applies the pressure. Glides oh, inside, good goes to the left hand. Doherty and Ellison got in between him and the basket. That was Billy Thompson on the block. Great play. Crawl it goes! Through, and there's a foul call. Score the field goal. Herbert Crook, how many times this season he's come up with a big play? Ran the break beautifully. And North Carolina had the break going their way. Billy Thompson came up with a good defensive play. And here's Crook going right through the pack. Kenny Smith hits him, gets a good roll, and it goes. See Crook slides right through both Martin and, and uh, Kenny Smith for the layup. Louisville just deadly from the foul line. Denny Crum has to like what he sees. 
They are 13 of 16 from the line here tonight. Here's that zone again. Now, Louisville likes to play man-to-man, -man, but when they saw the three big men in the game, instead of getting caught in a mismatch, they went zone. Smith, and it rattles out. Doherty with an offensive rebound. Great touch inside by Doherty. That's how he keeps the ball above his head. Doesn't give a little guy a chance to go down there and steal it from him. Ellison. Up catch. And slammed in by Thompson, who came from the weak side. Pace of the game, picking up North Carolina, realizing they got to put some points on the board in a hurry. The Wolf. And they are. Championship quality coming here. But you know, Louisville has been awesome in, in recent ball games. What they did to Memphis State, Metro Championship, they look so good. Of course, in the regional so far, they've been outstanding. People back in December wondered if this club's going to come around. They had to blend the uh, young players with the mature players. Hall, Doherty rebounds, outlet on the wing to Hale. I think that pass was set for Kenny Smith. Good pass. Side to Martin. Billy Thompson hit his wrist right up on the rim. He's got to be careful when you come across the block and shot like that. That has to hurt a little bit. Down to eight. 12 minutes to go in Atlanta, and LSU has played a whale of a game. They lead Georgia Tech by three, and no doubt John Williams has something to do with that. There you see North Carolina dropping back into that zone. A whip it to Wagner. Boy, when you put Hall and Wagner against that dome, zone down the baseline, they're such great shooters. Tough for the zone to get to them. Doesn't like that range. Wagner he likes to rebound a closer. Crook, he's got two teammates, and it's Thompson who tried to fly in and couldn't hit it. Martin rebounding off to Smith. That's about all Billy Thompson can do with that play. Hale misfiring, one shot off a quick rebound for Louisville. And Warren Martin really starting to limp up and down the court. Now that foot giving him a lot of trouble. He's not being able to get down the court at all. Playing with some pain here. And Louisville becoming more and more patient. Spreading North Carolina out, wanting to make Warren Martin have to go guard somebody away from the basket. They clear out, and as Wagner came around, Smith, Kenny Fowler. Jeff Lebo returning, and that is Mark McSwain for Louisville checking into the game. And on Kenny Smith, three fouls. See Steve Hale going out. I thought Martin may come out, but it looks like Dean Smith wants to get as many minutes of him out of him as he can and not let that leg kind of cool down. He's trying to get the minutes in consecutive order here. Thompson turns the great corner. Play. Martin was right there. Brittany just adjusted that shot. 8 of 11 for Billy Thompson. And I think he's playing about as well as I've seen him play in a big game. I would agree. Of course, down the stretch, he's been outstanding. All Metro again this year. Didn't make All-American as many people expected throughout his career, but he has showing now that he's certainly one of the quality players in the country. And Louisville stays in that zone. Here's Wolf. He can square up to the basket by Wolf. Joe Wolf is 6 of 11 from the field. 13 points for North Carolina. Of course, his brother played for Dean Smith earlier. McSwain on the foul. Not a smart play by Mark McSwain. And that's a turnover. It'll go to North Carolina. They trail it by 10. We're inside of 10 minutes, and they can come down to within eight. There's a case the ball went into McSwain. When he felt the man on his back, he knew there was a lot of pressure inside. He should have thrown it just right back out again. We've got a timeout. We're at the West Regional in Houston, and Louisville leads North Carolina. Tonight's West Regional semifinal game is sponsored by Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. Team Xerox, the right products and right people all working together. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. From Houston.
Houston, Texas. I'm Brent Musburger with Billy Packer, and Billy Dean Smith trails by 10, 9.52 to go. What would you do to get back in this game against a very talented Louisville team? Well, the first thing I think that uh, certainly he knows and, and all the coaches know that with a 45-second shot clock, the clock works in your favor now and the fact that the other team has to put up the ball. They can't shorten the game. So I think you have to be patient. There's a case of looking, and he stepped on the line. You've got to be patient. I think you want to go inside the door. One of the strange things for North Carolina is they normally have the other team in some foul trouble. And up to this point, Louisville only has three. And I think that's the fact they haven't been going inside, picking up some fouls as they did in the first half. Want to punch it inside some good backdoor cut. Left-handed shot by Smith. Another thing, Brent, in this situation, a lot of times when you get a lead that's just 10, now down to 8, you have a subconscious feeling that you've got the game won. And in the case of Louisville, they've got to keep putting out. Billy Thompson's got right, Hale. Wagner, and he's trying to get out of trouble. Here's McSwain. Thought about passing. Handed the ball back to Wagner. McSwain, a little tentative. So Hale's wide open. Ball. Hall's wide open. He traveled. They're going to have to get McSwain out of there, Billy. He's making some... Uh, Bad turnovers for Denny Crum in this situation. He stepped on the sideline down here. Now he traveled. He committed a foul down there. Tony Kimbrough jumps up, and he will replace McSwain right away. Well, I think it's a case of jitters out there. Well, I think what happened to McSwain is he found himself in a position to handle the ball out front, and that's not his game. He needs to be down underneath the basket. And now back to man-to-man -man is Louisville because the three big men are not in the game. So you can see the strategy on the part of Denny Crum. Billy Thompson on Doherty. Here's Joe Wolf on the turn. Hit on the arm, and he was also fouled a chance for a three-pointer. Now there's a case again where the switches get you in trouble. You saw Hall got matched up with Wolf on the switch. Not much he could do. The best thing is not to try to block the shot. Now you can see Hall's going to get caught on the switch. He's stuck here with Wolf, who's got a big size advantage, and Hall comes down, hits him right on the elbow. Very difficult to make a jump shot when a man hits him on the elbow. That's good concentration. And Ellison returns. Hall will sit down and Wolf and pull the Tar Heels here to within five points. Joe Wolf is having a big night. And Brent, it's really interesting how Denny Crum has that ability to make these substitutions. Now you look out in the court and you say, hey, who's going to play guard? We've got Wagner and Kimbrough, two fellas, 6'5 and 6'6. Six, six. And now North Carolina ought to be picking up in the press. And Billy Thompson comes back to help with the ball handling. They really don't have a ball handling type guard in the game. But Kimbrough, who is a swingman, is somewhat at least adequate on the backcourt. He's going to try it. And Thompson missing the shot. Ellison with the offensive rebound. So and right away off the bench, he makes a big contribution. Now Doherty trying to push Ellison out of the way inside. Great pass for the Wolf. Super pass by Hale. Surprise North Carolina not trying to put a little pressure on his team that's on the floor now, ball handling wise. Crook off the fake against Wolf. Doesn't get the roll. Lebo rebounding, bringing down. Lebo got a step inside on Kimbo. Can it goes. Shot and hit the field goal. Boy, he is having some game. Kimbo hurt his arm in that play. He's down on the floor. I don't think the referee, yeah, they recognize now. We saw this happen yesterday in practice, practice to Dave Popson. Some play by Levo. Kimbrough falling down. Let's see where he gets hit here. Super concentration by Leo, Lebo putting it up. I never did see the injury. Well, Lebo had six field goals in the first half. That's his first here at the second. A different angle of a stumbling Kimbrough. He just pulled his arm out. Still down on the floor, being tended to by the Louisville trainers. And it looks like the upper part of his right leg that he is holding there. Yeah, I know it's the hand. Yeah. You know what might have happened? The same thing happened to Popson yesterday. He hit his funny bone and uh, just kind of paralyzed his hand. That's what happened yesterday in practice. Now, that was out here earlier yesterday, of course, when the Tar Heels were practicing. You see Kimbrough going down. And there he is. He's in some pain. He's still on the floor. Now, you're going to have Lebo going to the foul line. North Carolina has it down to three. He has a chance to go to two. So a 10-point lead has evaporated. It is at three with eight minutes to go in the game. North Carolina is right back in it. 
Kimbrough having injured his right hand trying to flex it and get some circulation back in that part of it. It's going to be Hall coming back in the game for him so that Denny Crum goes back to his original starting lineup. Don't be surprised, uh, Brent, right here with Carolina down two if, if uh, Lebo makes this shot to see North Carolina press for the first time in the game on a full court basis. Carolina is off to an 11-2 run right now for the last two and a half minutes. Lebo stepping up at the free throw line can make this a two-point game. Missed his last two and hits that one. Here it comes North Carolina picking up full court. Billy Thompson always valuable helping handling that ball. Thompson Hale jumping out and knocks the ball. And his hand is wet from, I think, yeah, a soda that he, uh, and he spilled wipe. over there. And uh, a few of the writers are still scrambling. There's some copy that will have to be rewritten over there, I think. Well, it's a good idea for Hale to wipe those hands and uh, off real well because you get the coke on and get, some, get your stuff a little bit uh, sticky. There you see that game getting a little sticky right there, 256 all. Bobby Crimmins and Dale Brown going after each other. With six minutes to go in Atlanta. I'd say the SEC's looking pretty good. I've already got one team in with Auburn. And of course, you can find out on tape delay what happens to two others, and Kimbo still being tended to over there on that right hand. Good job by Milt Wagner realizing the double team was coming and getting rid of the ball. So the two starting lineups. Back on the floor at the 7.30 mark with North Carolina down by a pair, 71-69. Well, great defense, and the Tar Heels can tie it up. Nice defense by Kenny Smith that time. Smith rises up. And, and Crook, Crook snaps it down. Isn't he amazing? It seems like he comes up with every big play. We are now told from the Louisville bench it is a pinch nerve, and he should return. That foul is on him. Right, and there was a, a nice piece of officiating. Kenny Smith kind of slammed the ball down on the floor and it went back over his head. You see, Hale's going to commit the foul. Kenny Smith thought they were off to the races on this one. You see him come out. He realized the call was made and he slammed the ball on the floor and the official went over and said, hey, we don't really need that. We don't want a technical foul here. Here comes the trap. Wolf coming from the back side. Somebody's got to be open. You can see how well coached Louisville is. They realize all the things North Carolina is going to do, and they really have themselves set to handle it. Allison tried to get the ball inside. And heavy traffic. Is that going to be a foul? Oh, the referees looked at each other trying to see who had the call. Nice piece of officiating again. Another chance for North Carolina to tie the game at the 6.30 mark. Gordy had position, still has it. And we are tied for the eighth time. And the last time, of course, was 43 all at the half. And then Louisville came out with that 16-4 spurt and opened up a 12-point lead. And North Carolina has erased that. Crook with the shot, and now the Tar Heels can go ahead. This is some kind of comeback, Brent. Louisville was really rolling. Knocked away from Wolf, and he was fouled by Crook. And that is the fourth personal on Herbert Crook. It's amazing, that run that Louisville had, they seem to have all the confidence. Now they seem to be the ones that are lacking a little confidence, playing passive and North Carolina making the good run. I don't think that Denny got the production out of his bench that he has been throughout the season. Kimbrough and McSwain came up a little short, and he's had to go back to his starters here. You'd have to think North Carolina rested a little bit more. Inside the Doherty, stays with it. That's a three-point play opportunity for Doherty. It's tough to stop him in around that basket. Curtis Ellison got off the ground, was able to deflect it a little bit, so the basket didn't go. There's Doherty getting position on Billy Thompson, goes up, misses this one, gets the ball back. Now, here's where you thought it'd be three-point opportunity. Good job by Ellison not to commit the foul. I mean, not to allow him to get the easy basket. 
at the senior center. Steps up to the free throw line with a chance to put North Carolina in the lead. And he has 19 points on the game, 11 rebounds. He is now 3 of 5 from the free throw line. 70% free throw shooter. This is a pair. Now that's Lebo missed a pair and Doherty missed a pair. Big possession for Louisville. Whitener. Good leaping by Paris Ellison over the top. Doherty had his man blocked out. Ellison came right over the top. North Carolina playing that little box of theirs, setting a lot of screens. And again, Hale picks up his dribble. That can be trouble. Wolf. Tied again at the 5-10 mark. He's tough down around that baseline, isn't he, Brent? He's got the right hand, a left hand, a little jumper, those half hook shots. Billy he scored just two points less than his career high. 20 tonight here for North Carolina. North Carolina really packing that zone back. Now look for Hall and Wagner to look for a jumper. Thompson takes it. You hear Doherty talk. I've got it, Joe. North Carolina that delayed fast break, wanting to get it to Doherty. Wolf runs around at the baseline. Ellison with a hand on it. Kitty Smith gets inside. He was fouled. And underneath committing the personal foul that time. Here's the case of Doherty keeping the ball alive on the boards. He knew he couldn't get it, but he just kept it alive. Move on the inside. And it's going to go against Thompson. That has been confirmed. Both Thompson and Ellison were there. And for Thompson, that is his fourth personal foul at the 430 mark. Tied at 73. Referee's taking that one and one. I certainly thought he was in the act of shooting. Won't make any difference. Kenny Smith putting the Tar Heels ahead here. So they have come back from a 12-point deficit. And then the next uh, foul by North Carolina, Louisville being a one-on-one, -on -one, so that won't be a factor. You look for all the small ingredients the rest of the way here. The Summit in Houston, Texas. It's a West Regional semifinal between Louisville and North Carolina. Billy, we said at the very top of the broadcast, this had the makings of a championship game. It certainly has delivered. Louisville opening up that 12-point lead. North Carolina storming back, and now at the 430 mark, they lead it by two. How difficult will it be for Louisville to regroup now, having squandered that big lead? Well, I think they're all right, Brent. They, uh, you know, they've got a quality basketball team. I think we're, we're in a game exactly what we expected. They are two of the best five teams, in my opinion, in the country. If you had a double elimination tournament, I think they'd be right there but that's not the way it works it's one and done and somebody here is not even going to get a chance to go to a regional final and these are two teams that are certainly final four caliber they'll have some heartbreak the loser in this one oh, oh, so and thompson was right there right man at the right spot he was fouled by wolf as he backed into him that's a classy piece of inside basketball work by billy thompson Third foul on Wolf. Purvis Ellison comes up, misses it. Now watch if Billy Thompson doesn't walk on this play. He grabs the rebound. To get position, he walked to get in place. Joe Wolf fouled him on the back. Gets away with it. Big play for Louisville. And a chance to put his team ahead. And remember, Thompson right now is playing with those four personal fouls. It's his first miss from the foul line. In the tournament. After three games, straight man-to-man -man by Louisville again. Got to really be careful for the backdoor cuts. Kenny Smith had one. Doherty puts it down, swings around. No foul. Side, no whistle. Kenny Smith. Boy, it gets tight at this time. Wolf's left-handed shot. 
Carson battling, got a hand on the ball. Thompson controlling the rebound, gets it in the hands of Milt White. Well, Curtis Elson. 343 now. Really did the job in that sequence. And he wants it. You can look at him, Brent. See how he wants the ball down there? Just a freshman. They get Hall open against Lebo. Misfired on the shot. North Carolina's turn to try and take the lead. Hale. Downtown shot long for him. Louisville's at back. <laughs> Good way to put it. Wagner. And now it's Carolina again. You sense both teams getting a little tired? Hale. Collision underneath. And it's going to go against Steve Hale. That's his fourth personal foul. Dean Smith questioning the call. Take a look at it. Not able to execute the break. I thought a good job by Hall. There's Purvis Ellison coming down underneath. And Ellison again, they're very tired. You see the Louisville players all bent over, just trying to grab their breath here. The officials letting him sit. Now Ellison, again, is so smart. You know, he's a little tired. And, and because he's, uh, I think, maybe a little injury there, he gets an opportunity to get that rest. Steve Hale has struggled somewhat against Denny Crum's defense here tonight, too. He is only two of nine. The offensive production has come from Wolf. He has nine field goals. Doherty with eight, and Lebo with seven. And for Louisville, Thompson with nine, Ellison with six. 40 seconds to go. LSU in the Omni in Atlanta. And again, what was supposed to be a home court advantage is not holding up. It certainly did not at Syracuse, where the Admiral David Robinson in the Naval Academy did a great job on Syracuse, and tomorrow they go against Cleveland State. Tony Kimbrough, who's had a hand problem here in the second half of this game, over on the Louisville bench. Ellison Conley hits those free throws. It's a two-point Cardinal lead at the three-minute mark. And Brenny got an opportunity to get a little breather there. He's Doherty trying to get position, but Ellison beats him to the spot. Lebo is open. Missed on that shot. And there's Crook. Crook. We've said it maybe ten times in this game. A key play, Crook comes up with a rebound or the shot. A good defensive play. Inside to Thompson and the four-point Louisville lead. And both teams have made great comebacks. Dean Smith trying to tell his team to calm down a little bit. They're acting like they're 15 behind. Doherty and Cook was there defensively. He forced that turnover, stole the ball, and the Cardinals come down with a four-point lead at the 2-0-6 mark. And you notice they're spreading it out. Not exactly a four corners, but close to it. And the ball is stolen by Smith, but he reached in and fouled. Big and play there. Fourth person. That's a big play there. Milt Wagner on the way down. Kenny Smith could have been off to the races. And what these fouls are doing for Louisville, too, giving him a chance to rest. One minute and 58 seconds left here. And Denny Crum leading Dean Smith. Remember, he has never beaten him. He is 0-4. The first time they ever went against each other it was Denny's first year at Louisville, and it was the consolation game of the NCAA championship, a game they no longer play. And Denny remembers it against Dean as one of the most painful nights of his career. He said, I'm so glad they did away with a consolation game. They even used to have consolation in the regionals. That'd be a tough game to play. Milt Wagner is a guy that loves to go to that foul line in the key situations. His teammates refer to him simply as ice. Not bad. 94% free throw shooter in the end of the ball game. Nice touch. Didn't even touch that rim at all. A six-point lead. Carolina must hurry now as Louisville has come back to score the last eight points in this game. They wanted Doherty. And Ellison reaching in his call for a foul, <laughs> complaining that he was half strangled on that underneath. Well, I think he was right. He got excellent position getting over there. He's done a great job on Doherty, preventing Doherty from having the super big night just with good position defense. Saw Sam Hill at Iowa State last week play excellent position defense in the post. And Ellison's doing likewise. No 
Mark Jones going to st start thinking full court press. Missed the free throw. Thompson with the rebound. 145 to go. Starting to spread out there off the defense. Good deal play. by Lebo. Comes back down on Wagner. Goes to the left hand. And it's 81-77 at 133. And there will be a timeout. So Dean Smith will huddle up now with the Tar Heels, who are down by four. Here in Houston, we have 133 remaining in regulation. North Carolina trailing Louisville by four. The winner, of course, on Saturday will take on Auburn for the West Regional Championship. Dean still has two timeouts remaining. Benny Crum with four right now. The possession arrow pointing in the direction of Louisville's basket. And both teams in the one and one. You don't want to commit an intentional foul here to put somebody on the line. And if you look at that Louisville team, both of these teams, as a matter of fact, shooting 73 and 75% from the free throw line. So they're both excellent free throw shooting teams. North Carolina does not want to give that ball. Hale comes over and he is called for the foul against Crook. Joe Wolf jammed a finger. But they did not want to let that ball get inbounds to Milt Wagner to put him on the line. Well, Wolf feeling that injured hand. And for Steve Hale, as we see, this is his fifth personal foul. And one of the great players for North Carolina may have just played in his last game as he goes over to the bench. He's out of Jinx, Oklahoma. His father, of course, once was the coach at Oral Roberts. He's going to go on to medical school. He'll be married to Lynn Taylor this summer. He's going to go to Europe, take a year off. Told me earlier today that he is not interested right now in going to the NBA. Certainly, he will be drafted low first round or second round. He's one of those classy, all-around players, and he had to wait until his senior year to be recognized for what he is, and that is a catalyst on this North Carolina team. He has meant so much to the ball club. And this could be a very disappointing ending to his career unless the Tar Heels come back. And then, of course, he would play again on Saturday. Well, Louisville's been just deadly on that free throw line. And Crook has had an outstanding game. When you start talking about MVPs of this ball game, it's tough. 18 of 22 from the free throw line. Can't ask for more than that. That's as a ball club. That's 19 of 23. Good job by Hall to prevent that quick pass from getting inside. Carolina looking for the shooter, and they do not have a lot of time to squander in this situation. Curtis Hunter, who has come in, right offense. offensive foul on Hunter. It'll go over at the 116 mark. Second personal foul on Hunter. Billy, I thought Carolina was taking just a little bit too much time. Well, they tried to go inside, and when Lebo picked up his dribble there, he had nobody to pass inside to because Louisville had dropped back on both Wolf and Doherty really important to keep that dribble alive if you're trying to go inside with it. Now you can feel the players and the fans of Louisville just feeling it here. Ball brings it up. It's tough to trap against Louisville. Billy Thompson and Ellison looking for a lob. Got it to Crook, and he drew the personal foul as Doherty was forced to slam across in that situation. So we've got a minute four. 83-77. Well, we'd like to welcome those of you who watched LSU and Georgia Tech down in Atlanta with LSU winning by six points and going to a regional final. And of course, coming up in about a half an hour, you will see who they will be playing because on tape delay, we will show you the Kentucky-Alabama game here on CBS. I'm Brett Musburger along with Billy Packer. You are looking at a disappointed North Carolina face as Louisville has closed to within a minute four of advancing to the regional final here in the West. Smith getting... Oh, Ellison! Ellison! coming up and there was a foul down away from it's, Ellison's it's, move. It's going to be on Kenny Smith on the charge. Crook going to the foul line and Ellison with a great block. That super play on the inside again. Kenny Smith goes all the way. There is the foul on Smith hitting against uh, Crook. And a great block by Ellison. Smith goes to the, to the bench. The second Tar Heel started to foul out. Steve Hale a short time ago. And now 
Kenny Smith, the junior league. So, of course, he has one more year to play for the Tar Heels. And now the Louisville fans up behind the Cardinal bench. And they'll be going up against Auburn. And Chuck Denny, Person and company. Denny Crum going to beat Dean Smith for the first time. And Zeno Smith in the game. Dean Smith always trying to come up with something, but it's going to be too little too late here. That big run, Brent, at the start of the second half when Louisville got off with a good spurt. North Carolina made a good comeback, but that big spurt did it. There was one significant difference in the season that these two schools had, and that's the fact that way back before the first of the year, North Carolina played a much softer non-conference schedule this year than Louisville did. Denny Crum said, I'll play tough then because I want to be ready to play the good teams come tournament time. And Denny Crum again has followed that formula and come up with it. How about that? A senior player, Milt Wagner, realizing that Carolina tried to get it in easy. He dropped back there and pressed and picked up a five-second play. And in regard to that schedule, Denny Crum is one of the few coaches in the country that doesn't mind in December putting it on the line. Herbert Crook just looked over at you, Dale, at me, and he just flashed up number one. Well, he, he's been close to number one in this ballgame. There's the four corners. North Carolina did nothing but foul. Jeff Lebo reaching in. So Louisville with 23 free throws here this afternoon. They've hit 80, or this evening, they've hit 85% from that line. North Carolina 11 of 18 at the other end. They are now one victory away from Dallas in the final four, but they'll go up against a heck of an athlete Saturday. Chuck Person and the Auburn Tigers will be their opponent. Well, Brent, when you, we talked about the start of this ballgame, about some of the matchups, I thought Billy Thompson was too much for Steve Hale in regard to size, and Purvis Ellison did the job on Brad Doherty. And again, going back to what you said about scheduling, Denny Crum, you know, he went up against Kansas, and he saw a dryling there, and he went against North Carolina State and saw Washburn there, and, and had to go against Memphis State with Bedford. So there's a case where Ellison had all that opportunity to play against good people, and the night when Brad Doherty came out, he was ready for him. Thompson receiving an ovation as he goes over to the sideline. He was 10 of 15 from the field. He was 4 of 5. He missed his first two shots in this game and went to the sideline for Coach Crum. And after a brief rest, came back in. And he was a key player for the Cardinals the rest of the way. This is just a tremendous win for that Louisville organization. He's talking to Tony Kimbrough over there. And despite all the great things that must be going through his mind, he's asking Kimbrough what's wrong with his arm. And Kimbrough explaining that, he, that he, it looked to me like he probably hit that crazy bone and had numbness all the way down through his hands. You talk about a key free throw shooter. Hall's not going to miss many in the clutch either. There's Billy Thompson, all smiles. Last year, of course, North Carolina went to the Southeast Regional Final and was eliminated by the national champion to beat Villanova. And tonight, they will be ousted by Louisville here in a regional semifinal. Dean Smith only lost three times in the regional semifinal, and you can remember what that big one was when Michael Jordan and Sam Perkins got knocked off by Indiana in Charlotte. 84. No sense fouling here. You might as well play good defense, not put them on the line. Joe Wolf reaching in. Well, let's think about that matchup. Louisville-Auburn, Brent. Good athletes on both sides. Certainly, Louisville has a lot more tradition in terms of being in the NCAA play. I, I was kind of surprised talking to some of the Auburn players. Uh, you know, last year's experience, even though they was in a losing cause, may have them ready. Now, Brad Doherty goes out of a North Carolina game for the last time. A senior from Black Mountain, North Carolina, who has had a fabulous career for Dean Smith. He sits down. 19 points, which is a solid game, but, you know, for them to win in this game, he had to have the big game. 25, 26, it put a lot of pressure on Louisville. Maybe even getting Ellison in foul trouble, which never happened. James Day, a senior from Burlington, North Carolina, with Lanzino Smith sitting down. So Dean wants Day to close out his career on the floor. He, of course, has not had a lot of playing time in one of those practice performers for the Tar Heels. Final 25 seconds in Louisville will go on to take on the Auburn Tigers. Milt Whitener. 
Another solid, solid performance by Milt. You can imagine last year having to sit there all that time with that broken foot. A lot of people thought maybe he'd go pro, not come back, and uh, he's come back and given him a great season. There is Herbert Crook, who had a big, big hand in what happened here tonight. They're going to the sideline, McSwain missing. Warren Martin. Curtis Hunter. Gene Smith calling the timeout. Want to do everything he can, but down 13, that's not going to make much difference. No, this one's over, and Louisville will advance, and North Carolina will have to go home. We'll be right back. So stepping up to the free throw line, what you missed was a quick foul over there, and Kevin Walls will come to the line for the victorious Louisville Cardinals. One of the things about this tournament, just when you think someone has a lock on a game, such as Georgia Tech at home or Syracuse up in the Carrier Dome, up jumps an underdog like LSU tonight. So in looking ahead at the Auburn game, you are tempted to say Louisville has tradition, Louisville has depth, Louisville has the best team, but hold on. Auburn has played pretty well here so far. And Zeno Smith with the miss. Saved by Abrams, knocks it down to McSwain. He'll take it on in. What does that say about Kansas playing close to home anyway with a home crowd? 28 of 33 free throws for uh, Louisville, and that set the stage. Super game. Denny Crum and the Louisville Cardinals, 90.